Efren Jiang, Ambassador of Pakistan in China, Ambassador Khalil Hashmi, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends of Pakistan, my dear Chinese brothers and sisters, honorable ministers from Pakistan and government officials from Pakistan and China, Assalamu alaikum. And Nihao, it is great honor and a privilege for me to be standing before a great event and a wonderful gathering of great Pakistanis and Chinese in this great hall. And for me, there cannot be a bigger honor and privilege to make a few submissions for your kind consideration. Ladies and gentlemen, as Prime Minister of Pakistan, I have come here to convey you warmest greetings from 240 million Pakistanis who live in four provinces of Pakistan in Azad, Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit, Baltistan. May I say, without any fear of contradiction, that friendship and brotherhood between Pakistan and China has no other parallel in this world. Of course, we have our brotherly countries in Gulf states like Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, Kuwait. They are our brotherly countries. Of course, Iran and Afghanistan. But this long journey of friendship between Pakistan and China is unprecedented for more than one reason. Number one, this friendship is selfless. It has no personal interest. This friendship has stood by the test of time. This friendship has stood storms, wars, earthquakes, floods. And this friendship has been unshakable, unbridgeable. This is what Pakistan-China friendship is all about. The great sage, rather immortal sage, Confucius, once said that it is not important to have many friends. What is more important is to have one friend, but that friend must be trustworthy and can stand through thick and thin. This is Pakistan-China's friendship. May I share with you a couple of personal episodes so that I can make an effort to make you understand where I come from with regards to this great journey of friendship between China and Pakistan. This was 1981 and I was visiting China for the first time as part of a delegation which was headed by the then Minister for Industries in Pakistan. We were accommodated in those days uh, in one of the best hotels in China and in Beijing. I believe it's still there. And then from Beijing, we were taken to Shanghai. And from Shanghai, we were taken to Canton. Now it's called Guangdong. And after our visit was completed, the then ambassador of Pakistan in China invited us over dinner and invited comments from all of us 
about our feelings and assessment about China. Everybody shared his personal experience. And when my turn came, I said, Mr. Ambassador, my feeling about China, I can express in one sentence, and that is, China is suffering from success and not failure. He said, Mr. Shabazz Sharif, what do you mean by saying China is suffering from success and not failure? I said, Mr. Ambassador, China has just launched satellite in the orbit. It's a great success story. China has been able to provide food, housing, education, medical treatment to all its citizens. It's a great success story. China, through its centralized planning system, has ordered to manufacture so many thousands of tractors and machines, and these are being manufactured. He said, please explain what you have said. I said, I've explained everything. He said, I didn't understand exactly what you mean. I said, China's massive success story is in providing basic needs of life to its people here in Beijing, Shanghai, and everywhere. If you ask me that there are not many limousine cars on the roads of Beijing, there are buses and bicycles, I said, it is not something surprising because China is developing and making hard efforts to become a great country. Therefore, China is conserving its resources by not purchasing limousines and expensive cars, but investing in its youth, in education, in health, and in providing modern techniques to industry and agriculture to become a giant in few decades time from now. That is 1981. My very dear Chinese brothers and sisters, that was 1981. And today we are in 2024. It is a journey of more than 40 years. And imagine, I didn't know at that point in time that China in 2024 would be the world's second largest economy and the world's second largest and mightiest military power on the face of the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, many hundred years ago, in a small Chinese village, a young boy was trying to clear a path to reach his village to close the distance and reduce the distance. And he was using a shovel. An elderly Chinese person was passing by and asked this young boy, what are you doing? He said, my distance is reduced and I can reach my village in half the time. The elderly person said to that young boy, do you know that this is an uphill task, very difficult task, and you will not be able to complete this in the coming many years? He said, yes, I know this. It is a very difficult task, but I will keep on doing it. And if I die, my son will do it. And if my son dies, my grandson will do it. And one day, we will halve the distance to reach our village. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 
the greatest of stories of struggle, hard work, untiring efforts, blood, blood and sweat, which has made China today a great country on the planet. And without China, the world can't move. And without China, the world can't proceed. This is one of the finest hour for a person like me and my fellow Pakistanis sitting here who believe in this friendship through this journey of struggle, hard efforts and untiring efforts. But we all know that uh, China was born two years after Pakistan was born. But today, China's trade runs into trillions of dollars and Pakistan's trade is still hovering around 30, 40 billion dollars in terms of exports. China today excels in information technology, in artificial technology. We have just had this wonderful cooperation of space program between China and Pakistan. But in terms of Pakistan's progress and Pakistan's prosperity, I think it will be unfair to myself. And here is the question, and a $6 million question, that should we get dejected and sit down and lose hope? The answer is big no. We must get up, accept the challenge, learn from our Chinese brothers and sisters, follow their model, follow their circle of journey, and we will be there in a few years or a decade if we follow how the Chinese earned this status today through hard work and untiring efforts. This is my article of faith with me, that if we follow Chinese model, I have no doubt that Pakistan will regain its position in the community of nations and will be respected like Chinese brothers and sisters are respected by friends and foes. But how will this be possible to achieve? That is the point at issue. And the answer is, I want to give you a small episode. A businessman in Pakistan was very hard working, but somehow, as luck would have it, he lost a lot of money in his business. And he was sitting in his house, and he was weeping and sobbing. His family members came to him, said, what happened? He said, well, I've lost a lot of my money in business and therefore I'm very sorrowful and I'm full of tears. The family members said, is this the way to compensate for this loss? He said, then what should I do? The family members said, have a heart, stand up, we will work with you, we will support you, and maybe fortunes will turn around and not only you will be compensated for the loss of the past, but you will make profits in the future. So ladies and gentlemen, and especially my Chinese brothers and sisters, we are not weeping, we are not sobbing, we have accepted the challenge and ever since I have landed in this great country, I have been further emboldened by your great success story. We will follow your model, we will work hard, untiringly, we will put our blood and sweat and make Pakistan a great country. We will focus, rather have a sharp focus 
on our industrial, agricultural progress, prosperity, and avoid irritations, avoid conflicts like and follow the vision and dynamism of my great president, friend President Xi Jinping, who has shown the path not only to the Chinese people but the entire world that to make progress is possible through avoiding conflicts and promoting cooperation, avoiding wars and promoting hard work. This is what BRI is all about. This is what CPAC is all about. This is what Global Development Indicator is all about. This is what Global Security Indicator is all about. And Chinese leader, President Xi Jinping, is today one of the greatest visionary leaders around the globe. And I will follow his model, seek his support, and make Pakistan not only in the region, but all over the world a very respected nation, a country to be reckoned with, inshallah. The great poet, Dr. Alama Iqbal, one of his stanzas, he said, Tamanna abru ki hai agar gulzare hasti mein Tamanna abru ki hai agar gulzare hasti mein to kanto mein ulaj kar zindagi karne ki khu kar le aur nahi ye shane khuddari chaman se tod kar tujko koi dastar mein rakh le koi zebe glow kar le so if pakistan has to spread its fragrance and smell all over pakistan then all pakistanis will have to pass through that process of thorny process ladies and gentlemen there is no other way to earn respect in this world this is our motto this is our process this is our follow-up and this is how pakistan will become a garden where roses will spread its fragrance all over Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to conclude my humble submissions on a very somber note. As all of you know, that in April this year, there was a very sad incident in Bisham, north of Pakistan, where five Brother in China, planned and designed by the enemies of Pakistan China friendship. It was designed and planned by the enemies of CPAC. It was planned and designed by the enemies who do, who do not want to see Pakistan and China, this friendship rising to the heights of glory, apex of glory. So I once again offer on behalf of the people of Pakistan, the government of Pakistan, and on my behalf, my deepest view that as a human being and whatever is humanly possible, we will put in place all those measures, security measures, all those arrangements in place to protect the lives of every Chinese citizen in Punjab, in Sindh, in Balochistan, in KP, in Gilgit, Baltistan, and in وزیر آزم کا پاک چائنہ فرنشپ اینڈ بزنس ریسپشن سے خطاب پاک چین دوستی کی دنیا میں مثال نہیں ملتی وزیر آزم کا یہ کہنا تھا پاکستان چین کے تجربات سے فائدہ اٹھا رہا ہے میں نے انیس سو اکیاسی میں پہلی بار چین کا دورہ کیا وزیر آزم کا یہ کہنا تھا